almost straight away. Badger poo, well that's a good sign. Now this area is called a cooch and um, it's where a deer has laid down. Unfortunately it's the summer so all their winter hair has all been rubbed off on various other things and if you're looking at hair if you find hair on some barbed wire and you're not sure if it's a, uh, a, a fellow deer or which is what we get here or a badger um, the badger hair is square in its tubular form. Um, it's a lot stronger. It's not really breakable that easily. And it's hollow, whereas a deer hair is a bit shorter, a bit thinner, and it snaps very easily. So I'm just looking to see if I can see any hair. No, nope, I can't see any. Can't see any, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a cooch. And like I said, this time of year, all their winter hair was rubbed off. Admittedly, I do normally find some. I don't remember the last time I actually found none, but I'm still pretty sure this is where a deer is laid of a night time. Okay, let's carry on. If I go out for the day, not for photography or videoing, but for signs of wildlife, it takes me a few hours to settle in, to allow myself to slow down, let my senses get a feeling of my surrounding. It's only then I begin to look for things that look out of place, signs of paths, prints, upturned leaves, flattened sections in the woodland where deer have laid. You'd be surprised if you let your subconscious do the looking for you, you'll be amazed what you can see. If you look too hard, your field of view is narrowed and the less you see. Welcome. Now, last week, I went out with the camera and I was looking for signs of wildlife. And I realized there's a few things that I do that help me in looking for wildlife that I figured this week I would talk to you about. Now I'm back at a old badger set and runs that I used to come and visit. I mean, it's very old and overgrown and we're in an area of woods that is predominantly ash there's a fair bit of it still going strong. There's a lot of sycamore too. Most of the ash has died back due to this ash dieback disease. So it has allowed the sycamore to, uh, to grow mad and all the dogwoods and all the, the nettles, etc. But the trail that, that we're looking at here, uh, about four or five years ago, um, I came and watched and filmed the badgers a few times. But I figured that if they were 
here then, maybe on the same bank, further round, there may be new signs, new tracks to find. So I'm going to go wandering and uh, I hope you come along with me. As you can see here, that a lot has fallen down. I'm hoping, oh, I'm hoping I can find some new fresh signs. That would be, that would be nice. In fact, almost straight away, badger poo. And that's a good sign. That's a good start. And if you look here, you can see that it's fairly flat where the badger's tummies rub against it and make it bald. Now that's not, that's not very clear, but I should keep looking around and see if I can find some more prominent markings, possibly some scrapings and maybe some hairs. You can see here where the badgers have been coming through. You can see how flat this area is here and how bald it is. Now I'm going to have a little rummage around so if I can find any hairs or scrapings. Now amongst all these amongst all these cracks that are here, I mean there's plenty of them, you can also see some very clear and visible scrape markings where the badgers used to used to climb over this one. Now this is one from my original um, sets that I used to, used to look at. In fact, we've got some, some very nice clear markings just here. In fact, they look more recent than I was expecting. So maybe they are still using this as a bit of a highway. Some nice big markings here too. Okay, let's keep looking. Now this is the, this is one of the sets 
that I used to know. And you can now see with all the dead leaves, etc., in it that it's no longer used and the path that runs up around here is, is not uh, used in any shape or form. You can see that the path that runs down there literally just stops and then it's just all overgrown. And the main entrance used to be this big one here. Which you can see is just completely and utterly overgrown. So it looks like they've moved down the hill 150, 200 feet into a slightly steeper bank, but I've marked it. Yeah, that rain's getting quite heavy now and I've got nothing with me. I came out light today, so I've got no, no poncho, no waterproofs. It's because I didn't bring my camera. I wasn't uh, particularly worried. We're only showing a 12% chance of rain. But here it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna find somewhere to sit and have my lunch. Now that's sounding quite heavy. Right, I'm gonna find some, uh, try and find some decent shelter. Right, but this seems just as good a patch as any to um, sit and have my lunch. I'm under a, a bit of shelter. It's still dripping down on me. Some of the things that I do to help me in looking for uh, wildlife. Now today it was to come out and find the badgers uh, specifically. So it never hurts to do a little bit of research the night before just to top up whatever knowledge you have learnt about them refresh your memory a little bit and for me it was looking back at some old notes I'd written about its location from when I used to come four or five years ago. Now, I knew the rough area but I didn't know my exact area. Nowadays I tend to make a ordnance survey map uh, location for it and I make a note of that and when I normally carry with me is just like a little field book where I um, I write down any things that that I'm either uh, planning on talking about or I want to jog my memory when I'm looking for the badgers just to have a quick look through remind me to look for scratches for hair for rub marks etc and buzzard and although these are things that I know to look for when you're out in the field, or in the woods in this case, and you're, you're looking, I think it's good that you can just flick through your notes and go, oh yeah, because you're so occupied with what you're doing, there's so many things about setting up the camera, making sure the microphone's on, not to tread in their poo, not to put your foot in a hole, not to slide down the hill, that it's, that it's not a bad thing to just let it jog your memory. In the front of this, I've always got, um, a few, uh, depending on where I'm going, I've got a few little uh, information tabs that I've printed and I just stick in the front. This one is from when I went to Mull Lars, which was about otters, giving you a good identification to tell between various animals that could be along that beach. I also have a flexible ruler that I tend to carry with me. This is handy for measuring deer prints. I've used it to, to measure the size and I photographed the print next to the ruler so that when I get home, I can spend a bit more time determining whether it was a youngster or an adult, or indeed if it was a different deer than I had written it down to be. I've also used it to measure distances between paces, but that again is something that I always tend to, tend to have on me when I'm going out looking for signs. As you guys know that I 
I love the Collins Gem bird book. I've had this for probably 20 years and, and I've always got that in my bag or in my binocular um, case. But the one you don't know about is the, the Wild Animals book. Now, at least it stopped raining. I do have a up-to-date version. I say up-to-date. I have a 2009 version and it has photos and descriptions but it's kind of one piece per animal it's a lot thinner than the old book well i i had seen um, some pictures of the old books online and it looked like it carried or held more information than the newer book and it turns out that the older book although let me find something like red foxes although it had sketches instead of photos and it carried a lot more information about um, its print sizes the, the size of the litters more info on what the poo is like and i found that that the information you really want not isn't necessarily the picture it's the descriptions uh the things that help you so this is a uh a much older version um 1980 to be exact and I picked that up for, I think it was like £2.50 off eBay. And these are little books that I've got quite a few of the range of these books, Mushrooms, um, the SAS Survival book, which I've had for, for more years than I care to remember. I have one on insects and bugs and butterflies. And they live in the camper van and they're, they're quite nice to be able to just take some photos like when my wife and I have a way um, of butterflies and then when we get back to the, the camper van just have a flick through and identify it and go ooh, go ooh. It's a new one, I haven't seen that before and it's nice and now I'm not sure if it's got any information on badgers. And it does indeed have a, a bit on badgers. The badger is widely distributed and found in most parts of Europe, except northern and western Scandinavia and the highlands of Scotland, which I didn't know, but a good bit of info. Always carry my binoculars, never leave home without these for birds, for wildlife. In fact, one of the first times I saw a badger was through these because it turned out that where I'd set myself because there were four or five active entrances to the set that from where I was, they used a different exit and I heard them and when I looked, I couldn't quite see them, but later on, I heard them going down a track that did come visible for me and the only way I could see them was with the binoculars. I could see them with the naked eye, but the only way I could get a good view of them was with the binoculars, so I never leave home without those. So I think what I'm primarily getting at, I think is that when you're looking for wildlife, do a bit of research the night before, top up the old grey cells, and then write a few things down in a pad or on a piece of paper. And then when you're out during the day, just every now and then have a look at it, just to remind you, flick your, you know, collect your memories of things that will help you find what you're looking for. And like I said today for me, it was remembering a location I'd come to, figured it was worth looking further down the bank. And as it turns out, that's where they now are. And then for me, I have my, I have my Garmin E-Trex 20 that I use as a locator for me. And then I'll just take a photo of it with my phone just so I can log it down. Um, and then I'll either use that to come back to this exact location of which I won't really need to do, I don't think. It's an area that I know, it's not as if it's a new location, that is miles and miles and miles from anywhere I know. But, but otherwise, yeah, when I've been in Cumbria and Scotland, this is how I locate 
and then track myself back to that same point. Right, well, it stopped raining, so now I'm gonna sit and have some lunch and then see if I can find some other signs. Now I've had a few people ask me what I use for filming on and I'll show you here. It's just uh, an old GoPro Hero 6. I use a Rode wireless microphone. I don't always have the little light on top um, but when I'm in the woods and um, sometimes I'm wanting to give myself a bit of extra light it, uh, it comes in quite handy and obviously it's dimmable um, we can change its its um, lumens so it goes from like white to like a yellowy finish and I have just a um, circular um, polarizer filter on there and it just sits on a lightweight Benro tripod and that's pretty much it it kind of does the job for now yes it does suffer with the usual GoPro issues where it wants to lose some of the footage or not record the audio or not turn off but it kind of does the job. Well, I seem to have reached a dead end in that direction. It kind of pitters out. There's a fair bit of poo at the end. It's almost like they've done it and gone, that's it, no further. Well, I'm not gonna head back the way I came in. It's half past two now. And as I was definitely hearing, I'm gonna say badger, because I don't know what else would be rustling around so big and noisy by the dens. In fact, I'm half tempted to not go back past the dens. Not today. Another day I'll come back with my camera and set myself in somewhere for the day. Yeah, I think I'm gonna find a different way out. I mean, I wish I had my grappling hook because I'm on a steep bank and that's the truth. The path that there is, is the path that badgers have made. I don't really want to use it. Well, I'll go back to where I had lunch and I know that I can get up from there. So I won't be disturbing the badgers if they are about. I mean, obviously they'll hear me and my fat feet <coughs> thumping and bumping. But hopefully it won't put them off too much. I'm gonna continue wandering for a couple of hours. Maybe I'll find some deer tracks and maybe some some lays but we've got a couple of mountain bike groups here I can hear banging and chopping where they're making ramps etc so since they started that even all the bird noises pretty much stopped well if I don't find anything exciting to show you on the way out I hope you've enjoyed today's video I hope that it's been helpful 
and maybe some of you guys can take something from it that maybe you didn't know before or that may help or aid you in discovering more details about wildlife. If you have liked it then please give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, subscribe if you don't already. So until next time, thanks for watching, bye for now. If I make it out alive. Well I found a nice clearing, let's see if I can't find the, the buzzard. <laughs>